Man, I've got the greatest job you could ever, ever ask for. Um, if you like to travel. Uh, I've been doing that for over 30 years, going around the country, doing paintless dent removal. And one thing I love to do, a love I found that I just absolutely love, is meeting people and interviewing them to hear their story. And today I've got a great story to bring to you. Mud bugging, crawfish, crawdads. I'm on a crawfish farm down in Louisiana. I met the gentleman two, three days ago at the shop I'm working at. And today I'm going out with his son, mud bugging. Hey, I'm Lance Richard. Uh, I'm about to cut my bait to uh, go crawfishing this morning. Uh, I'm gonna be using some shad bait and my motorboat and we're about to uh, crawfish 43 acres. Right there, I have a. Um, it runs off of a little 13 Honda horsepower motor, and then on the side right here, I got a hydraulic pump, and this is hydraulic all, and it runs through these hoses and it goes to this this handle right here, which is what I'm gonna go forward and reverse in, and then I got a hydraulic motor on my wheel. That's what's gonna push us through the crawfish pond, and then I steer the boat with my feet down here. This foot pedal, uh, that's how I'll steer the truck with the wind. Nice. So. about a whole new experiences this is it this Lance started when he was 12 years old and he's 35 years old now and he is so exciting to listen to I can't wait to share some of the stories with you as we move on All right, so they sell their crawdads, mud bugs, to uh, several restaurants in the area. One is called Cakey uh, Cafe. Cakey Cafe. Hey, look, that baby go. tonight. I'm eating these guys. Look, here's one of your soft ones. Okay, tell them about soft ones. Soft crawfish. It is going through a moat right now. What that means is they're gonna shed their skin and grow bigger just like a turtle would or any other, a snake or something like that. And then once they come out of their moat, they'll get back hard again, like these, and then they'll be a lot bigger than what these are. They go through a couple moats a year from whenever they first come out of the ground, they'll go through moats and stuff to where they'll just keep getting bigger and bigger. So we should have probably one or two more moats for them and then they'll be done for the year. Once it starts warming up and stuff, they'll be done for the year and that's about the biggest they're gonna get for the year. All right, let's talk about the males and the females. Okay, so female crawfish is gonna have this right here on her. That, that little, little white spot? That little white spot. That's the female side, that little hole. And then on the male side, he's gonna have two of these right there. He's got two penises. Two penises. <laughs> I got, oh my goodness, yeah. Two of them right there. They're little guys, but they're cute. <laughs> so that's their male and a female crawfish. Wow, that's how you tell the difference. Yep. That's You're trying to get out. Look at that. <laughs> Don't you want to go to the hot tub? Huh? Look, there's daddy right there. There's a little jeep you riding around in. <laughs> My 
Lance, this is your father. Yep, this is my dad, Larry Richard. And Larry, I met you coming into the body shop and getting an estimate. This is how this episode started. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Jody's body shop. Yep, over at Jody's body, body and paint. So, Larry, how did you get involved in crawfishing? I just started picking up land. But what got you involved in the beginning? Everybody made a few dollars with it, so I got involved in it. How many years ago? About 25, 26. So you've been doing it since you're... 12 years old, I've been crawfishing. fishing. I'd come get out of school and I'd get in a motorboat or I'd push it when we had a push boat at the time, making a little money. So, how many years have you owned this property? Uh, 29 years. And it started with 25 acres? I started with four acres. Oh, you started with four acres? <laughs> four acres and, and then just kept growing, kept buying. Wow. Enemies of the crawfish. You have different types of enemies of crawfish. They, you got uh, coon, raccoon, uh, turtles, birds, minks, and uh, frogs. They'll eat about two pounds a day of frogs. Birds will knock over your traps, steal your bait, eat you, eat the crawfish. What's the number one enemy? I'd say it's coons or birds will be our number one enemy of them. How many pounds can a female crawfish bury each year? A female crawfish can produce up to 70 pounds a year. 70 pounds, one, one female. female. And they have the eggs on them? They, got, they start with the eggs and the eggs hatch and then they carry their babies till they become a free swimmer. And then at that point, they're, that, gone. they're gone. They're out of the nest. They're going in the field and they swim until they group. So you're taking these crawfish out every morning and you're delivering them to the restaurants every day. Every day. Every day. And they sell out. They sell out. They're delicious, right? They're Very, good. very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and this is a this is a low year. This is a very bad year. Very bad. And the reason is the drought. Probably everybody says the drought. Okay. The drought killed them. They didn't have enough water in the ground from the rain and stuff. And as we're out there today, you were you're, Chris, as we're out here, you explain again how you, you fill the lakes up and then you drain them, and then the crawfish go into the bury the into the fields and they'll bury into the le side the levees and stuff. And they stay there for how many months inside the levees? All over the rest of the year until you float back up. Yep. So you float back up. So what's your season for crawfish when you start filling back up? We start floating right. back up about September. Yeah, around September. We'll start flooding back up. And we stay flooded on until... Probably June. May, June. We start cutting water. And then when you cut the water loose and it's... Rice season or? Well, yeah, yes. we're dry. Rice season done past, so we won't plant rice on this field for a crop this coming year. Okay. We might, we'll leave it set, but we might plant green rice for crawfish next year. Or we'll plant beans on it. Or beans. Or beans. All right, here we are. We just uh, got to this cafe called the Kington? Kington Cafe. Kington Cafe in Louisiana. And you want to talk about fresh and farm to table and all these crawdad bags and i wish you could hear them they're all like crawling around in there they are getting ready to go to their to rest in a little hot tub that i will be feasting on later <laughs> all right i've made a small dent and this stuff is amazing. They got live music playing. The guy's playing his sax saxophone over there, way on that other side. And the way you do this, you take this big old guy, crawfish, and you break it in half. And then you take the head, suck all the guts out of it, and it is amazing. I know, it looks kind of gross. It's so good. Then you take the tail, you break it apart, and you get the little tail out of it, kind of like shrimp, but the seasoning is amazing. I'm gonna make you a pro fisherman out of today. Yeah. <laughs> 
Let's talk about the males and the females. Okay, so female crawfish is gonna have this right here on her. The little, little white spot. The little white spot. That's the female side, that little hole. And then on the male side, he's gonna have two of these right there. He's got two penises. Two penises. I got, oh my goodness, yeah. Two of them right there. They're little guys, but they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> so that's their male and a female crawfish. Wow, that's how you tell the difference. Yep, that's how you tell them apart.